So I wanted to add this podcast uh, in this section of MGO theories uh, because uh, the uh, chapter in the book has got a distinct flavor of uh, the author. This review paper is by Chidong and Bin Wang and others who are the MJL stalwarts and have been working on observations and theories uh, and modeling of MJLs for literally decades. Uh, so I will just run through this without going into the equations just to give you a flavor of how different MJO theories uh, make different assumptions and try to represent uh, some features or the other that uh, the authors assume are important uh, in terms of processes or assumptions. We already talked about that a little bit in terms of the skeleton theory, the moisture mode theory and so on and the trio theory of Bin Wang and so on and so forth. So this compares the, the uh, th four theories, four major theories of MJO and provides uh, tables of uh, the major assumptions and outcomes uh, of the model. So it's worth going through. Uh, starts by saying an MJO theory should satisfy the following uh, criteria. Uh, its framework must be established from the Navier-Stokes equations or their simplified versions. So you need some primitive equations or simplified versions of them to capture the main processes, especially the uh, main feedbacks. Its assumption, growth rates and planetary scales and uh, interaction through the convection and so on. Its assumption and approximations unique to the framework must be mathematically expressed. Uh, they should be testable against observations available currently uh, or in the future. So validation with observations is obviously very important. It must be able to predict or explain quantitatively the most fundamental scales of the MJO in time, so intra-seasonal time scales, and space, so the planetary scale of the MJO, and its eastward propagation in terms of being uh, slower than the free waves, for example. We kept calling them convectively coupled equatorial waves. So those are the main features the models have to capture. And it is undoubtedly desirable that an MGO theory is able to reproduce and explain uh, these vertical structures and many other observed features uh, of the MGO. So the chapter goes through the uh, structures that we will look at a table in a minute. Three-dimensional structure. So we are talking about the convergences and divergences and the convective uh, clusters embedded in the planetary scale dynamics and the vertical heating structures, wind structures uh, and so on, which are all critical. Uh, there are pairs of low-level cyclonic vertices associated with positive anomalies and anti-cyclonic uh, vertices associated with negative anomalies of MJO precipitation. So you have reversed uh, circulation at the upper levels, so convergence and divergence, cyclonic, anticyclonic, or in the dry phase you have divergence, anticyclonic, and convergence, and uh, cyclonic uh, vertices. Uh, the seasonal cycle, obviously uh, MGO is very much phase locked to the season. MGO migrates in latitude and peaks in the summer hemisphere. During boreal summer, the MGO propagates northeastward uh, this complicates uh, the, this complication of MGO propagation is likely related to the background state of the Asian summer monsoon. Here again, there are some details where uh, not everybody uh, believes that summer interseasonal oscillations are the same as MGOs, and whether they uh, originate in the uh, western north tropical Pacific uh, and emanate as Rossby waves, which are shifted northward by the background circulation of the summer monsoon, or whether they are originating in the Western Indian Ocean and propagating eastward but getting detoured northward uh, and so on and so forth. And of course the seasonality in terms of what happens do for the boreal summer interseasonal oscillations and MJOs during uh, m events like uh, El Nino. Irregularity. MGO events may occur in a group. Let me do the pointer again. 
may occur in a group with one of one following another known as successive MJO events based on a simple visual inspection one would find that the number of MJO events in a boreal winter season can be 0 to 3 on average the interval between two adjacent MJO, MJO events can be 30 to 160 days the multi-scale structure so embedded waves we talked about the uh, large-scale eastward propagating convective complex with uh, backward tilting uh, eastward propagating uh, features and uh, at uh, different frequencies and the two-day waves propagating westward with the front tilt and so on. Within the convection envelope of the MJO there is a rich spectrum of high energy perturbations. Some of these disturbances belong to the family of equatorial waves and others do not. Okay, so Kelvin waves, Rossby waves, mixed Rossby gravity waves were the ones, inertial gravity uh, uh, waves uh, were, inertial gravity waves were the ones we uh, mentioned. Modulation by other phenomena like the Indian Ocean Dipole, El Nino Southern Oscillation, quasi biennial oscillation, extra tropical perturbations that we talked about. They have to be captured uh, by the models as well. The number and, number and strength and longitudinal location of the MJO vary with lower frequency climate variability. MJO is, a, MJO is a moving heat source. Background SST distributions have a high impact on convection, so the longitudinal location uh, is critical. Air sea interactions, though it's strong, through its strong surface wind, rainfall and cloudiness, the MJO modulates the ocean mixed layer structure and near surface current of the underneath uh, ocean. Oceanic feedback to the MJO is subtle in observations, although its effects are evident in numerical simulation and prediction. It's been studied theoretically by Wang and Xi in 1998, was first uh, proposed by Krishnamurti in 1988. Uh, but the main thing to remember is that the mean SSTs in the regions of MJO uh, are high. So even half a degree or so of uh, uh, SSD anomaly can uh, uh, trigger uh, atmospheric r uh, response and coupling uh, and the scale of the SSD anomalies and the scale of the MJO are very different. So the air interaction is complicated business to infer from observations. So here are the main assumed processes and approximations. I won't go through which model is assuming what, but we will just look at uh, the uh, list of assumptions in the skeleton model. Andy Maida's moisture mode, Eric Maloney, Adam Sobel, gravity wave was uh, I forgot the name, and trio interaction by uh, Bin Wang. So we look at uh, assumptions that belong in the uh, and processes in the internal uh, and first baroclinic mode equatorial beta plane so f plane just doesn't work linear dynamics uh, hydrostatic balance uh, resting basic state wave activity uh, tendency cloud radiative uh, heating horizontal moisture advection so these decide uh, which processes are important in each of the uh, model and how that um, relates to the uh, features that we are trying to simulate like the vertical structures, uh, propagation speeds, planetary scales and uh, so on. Okay, Long wave approximation, boundary layer dynamics, for example the trio theory uh, relies a lot on uh, frictional convergence instability. Um, no zonal momentum tendency, so this one here in moisture mode uh, does this um, weak temperature gradient approximation and the uh, no zonal momentum tendency uh, assumptions. Moisture tendencies, whether it's prognostic or diagnostic, prescribed Rossby Kelvin wave structure, whether it's dynamically being simulated or prescribed. Positive only precipitation anomalies, so only capturing the convective phase of MJOs. Linear damping of momentum, what is the uh, approximation ma made in the frictional uh, effects as it propagates gates. Uh, Newtonian cooling, so how the radiative uh, balance is affected. Radiative convective equilibrium, large scale envelope convection, so the planetary scale uh, features. Uh, convective trigger and Buzanesque approximation, which I won't go into. It basically says that in the vertical, the uh, density 
variations are uh, important when they are associated with the G, so rho G kind of term. So it leads to some uh, approximations also in terms of what happens at the top of the uh, atmospheric column. Main parameterizations and closure assumptions uh, focus on precipitation, uh, so convective heating, cloud radiation, feedback and wave activity, moisture advection parameter. Uh, so for example here, uh, precipitation is proportional to lower tropospheric humidity and wave activity. That's what gives it the multi-scale uh, um, uh, processes. Here it's proportional to column moisture. It's triggered by a geopotential minimum. And in the trio interaction, there are convective parameterizations like uh, Betzmiller, Bretherton, and Kuo, and so on. So obviously, uh, these are not uh, uh, first principles. There are parameterizations and assumptions which obviously affect the details, and that is related to what the uh, models considered uh, consider the main feature to be s uh, simulated. Um, wave activity uh, oscillating against uh, lower tropospheric moisture in the skeleton model again requires multi-scale interactions. Moisture uh, advection parameter is assumed in the moisture mode where um, some of meridional and zonal uh, wind moistening processes are captured. So it again comes down to whether moisture plays a major role or not and whether moisture is a diagnostic variable or a prognostic variable. Main parameters and constants focus on convective time scale, momentum damping, Newtonian cooling, background diabetic, background diabetic heating in which MJO time scale diabetic heating is happening, background moisture vertical gradient which provides information about the planetary scale background uh, gradient over which MJO perturbations happen, number uh, density of storms. So here gravity wave makes some assumption one per thousand kilometers squared per day. So you remember gravity wave doesn't require uh, convection, it just assumes that uh, eastward and westward propagating gravity waves together can produce uh, MJO-like features. Um, explanations of the moist, uh, most fundamental features of MJO, uh, selection of spatial scale, selection of eastward propagation, and selection of time scale or propagation speed. Uh, they are different, for example, in skeleton uh, model or theory, matching observed horizontal structure, stochastic damping of small scales in stochastic uh, in the stochastic version. In the moisture uh, mode, the spatial uh, scale selection happens because of non-local long wave cloud radiative effects. So the planetary scale clouds are created to balance the, the uh, condensational heating released in the convective part of the MJO uh, at larger planetary scales. In the gravity wave case, gravity wave speed and number uh, uh, density of uh, storms uh, selects the spatial scales. Uh, in the trio interaction, instability generated by the boundary layer frictional convergence and damping of moisture feedback. So this is uh, very insistent on this instability, uh, boundary layer frictional convergence instability and of course there are other details here that I won't uh, go into but just want to give you an idea of what processes are um, looked at, how does the spatial scale selection happen, how does the eastward propagation happen uh, given the Kelvin waves and Rossby waves which go westward, Kelvin waves go eastward and w whether it's Vichy wave, uh, uh, role of the waves in uh, making the convection move eastward and so on and so forth. Um, so selection of time scale uh, or propagation speed, uh, there are parameters here, there are moisture gradients here, there is difference in the eastward and westward inertial gravity waves here and there is basic state moist static energy and moisture feedbacks and coupling of Kelvin and Rossby waves here in the trio interaction. Again, these are uh, the kind of assumptions made based on the preferences of the model builders and then there is the idea of validating each model with observations even though 
uh, observations guide the choice of important processes that are selected in the model in the first place. But this is how uh, things work. You look at the data or reanalysis, for example, and um, you make some assumptions about what are the main features and you try to represent them with your assumptions and parameters and uh, processes and then you go back and see if the model simulation then reproduces the observations uh, properly okay so i will leave it there leave it there it gives a, a good sense of the details of how the sausage is made again remembering that we have multiple theories because we don't have a consensus in terms of exactly what um, MJO is in terms of its dynamics and thermodynamics and interactions with the large scale in the tropics and with the extratropics and the feedbacks between the extratropics and the tropics that uh, we looked at in uh, another section. Okay.